we may enter a phase of serious skirmishes which get more and more violent and may develop into a civil war and a very untidy and messy one, says Professor Wale Shoinka, and this was said to Mr. President. Also, a plot for the 2023 elections thicken as the PDP governors meet to discuss defection plans. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka has urged President Muhammad Buhari to act fast on the herders' crisis to avert another civil war in the country. The Pan-African Yoruba Group, Athenifer, Arawa Consultative Forum, the Middle Belt Forum, and the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, have also backed the statements from Wale Shoinka. Joining us this evening to have this conversation is a traditional ruler, Oba Ebenezer Akiemi, the Iselu of Iselu Kingdom, uh, Yewa North Ogun State, and the National Public, uh, Public Secretary of PANDEF, Mr. Ken Robinson. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for all the wonderful things you're doing. Very glad. All right. I'm going to start with you, um, Kabiesi. I, I don't know if we have him now. Let's start with you, Kabiesi. Now, um, there have been several um, reports about skirmishes in Ogun State. There have been reports of farmers and herders clashing in Yewa community. And um, we were able to speak with you on this uh, sometime last week. Give us a picture of exactly what is going on in that area. All right, Mr. Ken Robinson, I'm just going to move over to you. Um, like I said to uh, the KBC, there have been several calls on the presidency, governors um, of these states where issues of um, headers and farmers have been happening. Um, but then it seems like many people have described the presidency's move to deal with this issue as very slow paced. Why do you think that is? Well, it's, it's obvious uh, that uh, the president is also a cattle rear, he's a cattle breeder. We understand he, he was, or is he still a patron of the ATL cattle breeders of the nation of Nigeria. And so there are sentiments and there are attachments. But as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we will join other well meaning Nigerians, patriotic Nigerians, as statesmen of this country for him to uh, put off those, those attachments, uh, part with the sentiments to, uh, of this, this, this group, because what is happening in Nigeria is, is a threat to the unity and stability of the country. Let's call a spade a spade. The country is under threat. The security situation in the country is getting worse. And, and, and uh, we cannot continue. Wolo Shrinka, the prof was very right in his assessment of the situation and Pandem completely aligns with, with his assessment. And so the president must must be decisive. He, he must know that he's president of Nigeria, he's president of all Nigerians, and not just president of um, a section of the country. Uh, those sentiments, attachments, and, and uh, biases and discrimination against a section, for a section, must come to an end. The, 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 the pension for nepotism must come to an end. And I share this with all sense of responsibility. What is happening is not uh, about farmers and leaders. It is it's, it's territorial conquest. It is it, those, those, those group of men, armed men, parading and roaming around in communities, forcefully occupying people's land. They are not just ordinary X-Men. They are maruders. They are, they are killers. They are kidnappers. And we, we don't want to attach this to any section or any ethnic group. They are human beings. People have said they are not Nigerians and that most of those persons are from outside the country. So why are we treating them with kid groups? Okay. Government must become decisive and okay. drastic actions must be taken. Mr. Mr. Robinson, because we're having an interference of sorts, we're going to quickly um, do something and then come back to have this conversation. Of course, we'll bring back both our guests. Uh, we're having a little connection issue. So once we get them back, we'll continue with this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
well, it's still plus politics, and we are looking at the issue of farmers versus herders, the conflict that has been boiling in several parts of the country, which has led to an outcry by uh, Nobel laureate Wally Shurinka and several other leaders of thought, including Pandeth and the Iowa Consultative Forum. And on the show, uh, joining us earlier on, we had Ken Robinson, National Publicity Secretary of Pandeth, and we also have uh, the um, traditional ruler of um, Isel, the Iselu of Iselu Kingdom uh, in Ogun State. He is Oba Ebenezer Akiemi. Now, I'm going to go back to Mr. Robinson. Before we went on that short break, Mr. Robinson, you were telling us why you thought the presidency was slow at dealing with the issue. Um, but again, we've been made to understand that it's not just people from the north who own cattle, Mr. Robinson. And that should not in any way um, affect Mr. President's decision when it comes to issues of security or insecurity in the country. So I don't know if I agree with you on the fact that Mr. President owns cattle and that's why he's, you know, not necessarily moving as fast enough to deal with the issue. Well, we, we, we have seen the several situations of uh, biases and discrimination on national issues and in the conduct of affairs of the country. And uh, we cannot uh, rule out uh, nepotic uh, tendencies. I haven't said that. It, 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 it was understood that I was saying that the issue that beyond cattle whereas or headers and farmers crisis is about territorial conquest. And uh, several cases have been reported. Here in River State, where I am from and where I reside, a, a very productive young man, Barrister Suwalabo West, was kidnapped in his farm and a few days later killed. And, and those uh, who were arrested are from a particular section of this country. And it's about a year now, and nothing has been done about it. They don't know what's going on concerning prostitution and, uh, and making them to face the consequences of the actions. And there are several cases like that across Southwest, across Southeast, across the Middle Belt, across the South South. And, and why is it happening in these this, this sections of the country alone? So, so there is a threat to the unity and stability of this country. And Mr. President, as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, must take drastic and decisive actions now in the interest, overall interest of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, back to you, Kabesi. Um, I did ask earlier on, but you didn't hear me. Uh, paint a picture to us, because you have been in the news, you have been on the tabloids, you've been even interviewed by the BBC, on what is happening to the farmers in your area. Uh, Plus TV Africa was able to go to Abelkuta to you know, um, ascertain the state of things, but give us a, a, a clear picture of what your people have been facing. Well, uh in Iselu and its environs, K2 and Open State in the section, we've been having a lot of difficulties with this section. You see, there's no way you can, there's no way you grow, make a farmer and help them to be together and you, you expect them to live in peace. It's like putting the square peg in the round hole. It's not possible. I think what the government just needs to do, because in our own areas here, yeah, what we see is yearly when they and killing of the farmers, breaking of the cellular, and giving the maize to their cattle, and they were harmed. Majority of them, you see them carrying AK-47. Where these rifles, where they are getting it, we don't know. Last year alone, we collected two, we managed to take two and we gave it to police. Up to now, we don't know what happened after it. So it's a big challenge for us in Southwest, most especially in K2 area, where I am from. And I don't know until when we sit down together and see what we can do. Maybe our governor should take an indulgence with the president and see how they can sit down and work with our modalities on how to tame this experiment. It's becoming embarrassing, even to the country. You know, our, our area now, it's a border area, it's a border town, and it's even becoming an embarrassment for any investor to come and invest in our areas because they look at the, the insecurity in our areas. So it's a big challenge. I think our governors need to do more. Maybe they have to give them a ranch if that is the solution. So that other farmers in the state who, who might have gone to borrow money from a great loan 
some of them nicer and the rest of those things. We have peace in their life and their land. And they were able to plant. You know, Oku State is the food basket of Southwest. And I can tell you categorically, the farmers are finding it so difficult. Even you can't call anybody to invest in farming now. And you are, you expect them to jump. No, they will never do it because of this expense problem. So it's a big challenge. It's big. The government needs to put up their responsibility. I, I, just want to, I just want to push you further on this. These headers are not necessarily outsiders or newcomers. They have been residing in your state for some time now. So why all of a sudden are they no longer able to leave or cohabit with the people in your area? Well, well they do be like in my own case. They, they don't have any sediments in my place. I don't sell land to any full animal. No, never. They don't settle in my place. But what we discover is that yearly, there are some of the local uh, Fulanis who reside somewhere in Abeokuta, some in, uh, areas in the Gua, not even my area. But their movement is always from Niger Republic, some the Bororos. Those are the wicked ones. They come from Boror, from Niger Republic, coming through Agadez to, to Gaia. Some will come from Miami, Captain in Niger Republic, to Agadez, Agadez to Gaia. Then Gaia, they will go through Malanville. Malanville, northern part of the Republic of Benet, to Faraku. And from there, they will cross through the border and come to Nigeria. You know, but they find it so difficult this year because there was a law made by the Republic of Benet that they don't want uh, any cartoons. They don't want open place in, 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 their, in, their, in their country. So with that, they have to go through Nigerian land and come to our area. There were so much that, you see, it's very difficult. And... It is this, this cartoon of the thing. You see a, a boy of 12 years old, a boy of 20 years old, with over 800 cartoons. How we, are you going to control that? You know, so before you know it, the cartoons, we, they, they will go into farms, they will eat all the farms, and, you know, anytime the farmer complains, it's always a problem. They will open fire, or they use machete. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge. So it is not that we've been living together in peace. It's always a problem. There's no year they come, they don't kill people. You know, but this year old is becoming so rapid that it's, it's unbearable. We just have to voice out that enough of this nonsense. Okay. You know? So All right. it is not that we will be living to we will not be living together with them. No. Okay. Uh, some community have been living together with them. All right. Back back to you, Mr. Ken Robinson. Let's talk about the politics of this. There are people who have said that, you know, farmers or rather herdsmen, like I just asked the cabbie, see, have lived with us in this country for so long. But then all of a sudden, from last year and the year before, you know, there have been issues with, between herders and farmers. And this year seems to be, you know, the height of it. And many more people have been complaining about being killed or macheted or something. Is there a politics to it? Because people are, several politicians have said that, people from the north have said that this is more political than an issue of, you know, um, one ethnic group against uh, the others. I would I would completely disagree. It's not about politics. It's it's about a group of people being emboldened by the inactions of the government and its its agencies. It's not it didn't start last two years or last three years. It's it's from twenty sixteen or thereabouts. We agree that uh Ed's Ben Thomas issues have always been there. But there's a new dimension to it. And uh, there is there's some level of greater arrogance and then people thinking that they, they, they own this country. It may see Allah has been going about conducting itself as the as 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 it were a landlord of Nigeria. And we, without any denomination, any any condemnation, any reproof from anybody, from those who should speak so, particularly the, the, the northern elders, and even the presidency. So so there is an encouragement as it were. And and, and it, it has got to the point where uh, people are saying, look, enough is enough. People will not sit and watch their, 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 their loved ones being killed, being kidnapped, being molested and raped, their livelihoods being destroyed, and continue to allow that kind of situation to, 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 to pass their uh, territory. But, so but, the Mieti, the but the Mieti, but the, but, but the Mieti the Allah is, is a group of people who um, are cattle rarers and cattle breeders. But then the, the, the problem that a lot of people have is the attachment of Fulani herdsmen to the whole piece that makes it look like there's an ethnic war that's brewing. Again, could this also be a case of giving a dog a bad name? Now, we cannot really say that all Fulanese are killers or 
troublemakers or headers who are causing trouble in different parts of the country, can we really make that blanket statement? No, no, we're not making any blanket statement. As you had Kabeci uh, said, and, 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 and uh, aligned to the fact that some of these persons come from outside the country. And uh, if you come to the Niger Delta, if you come to South South, and where I come from, we are predominantly fishermen and farmers. And so uh, cattle breeding or cattle rearing is also predominantly the, the, the occupation of a, a certain group of people in this country. That's known. And there are fishermen in all parts of the country, but predominantly, if you come down south of the Niger Delta to the areas of the Niger Delta, we are predominantly fishermen and farmers. And so we know, and then all the reported cases point to a particular direction. The intriguing aspect of this is that actions, the right actions are not being taken. How many of these killers, how many of these, let's, let's assume they are not Fulani X-Men, they are just Maruda's who are terrorizing Nigerians and making life difficult for innocent Nigerians. How many of these persons have been arrested and prosecuted and made to bear the consequences of their actions? That's the question that the government should answer. And so it points to a direction that there is some tolerance, there is some sympathy for these actions being perpetrated by these people. And it cannot be allowed to continue in the interest of this country, in the interest of all of us. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come back to you, Kabi. See, there have been several people who have said that the Nobel laureate, Wale Shoinka, uh, made a statement which somewhat portrays that he's beating drums of war. I'd like to quote them. They're saying he's beating drums of war and he's been called an alarmist. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Kabi? See, being that you, in your community, have experienced, uh, you know, some of these um, issues where the farmers were being attacked and you you told me when i interviewed you last week that a man was raped a woman was raped in front of her husband and and her husband was made to watch um do you necessarily think that what the uh, nobel laureate said was beating drums of war because there are people who are saying that this if not checked might deteriorate to uh, some form of war in the country how true is that Uh, Kabesi, can you hear me? I think we lost you. Back to you again, Mr. Ken Robinson. Um, would you like to respond to that? Okay, um, Kabesi, I think you're back. There are people who have said that the statement by Professor Wale Shoinka uh, is in some way beating drums of war and calling for uh, some form of crisis, you know, in the country. And they've even called him an alarmist. Where do you stand on this, being that you have experienced firsthand what's happening in your area? Well, I think is what Professor Wale has said is is trying to project what's going to happen. Because as I'm talking to you, you know, a lot of people are fed up about this issue of full and explain. And I can tell you categorically that the last thing which I feel most people are waiting for is what are the governors in Southwest, what are they going to say or what are they going to do? So if they see that they are not getting just if they see that they are not I can tell you categorically it's going to uh, I think we lost him. Uh, Mr. Ken Robinson, can you come in there please? Mr. Robinson, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, okay. can you can you quickly because we're almost out of time. Um, if this if the government is not dealing with this as they should, I mean, there was a, an outcry for the presidency to um, change service chiefs, and there's also been um, people have been appealing to the presidency and Mr. President to come out straight and speak on this issue and make sure that it's dealt with head on. If this is not done anytime soon, do you agree with those who are saying that this might become a full-on war of sorts? And for those who are blaming the uh, Nobel laureate, do you think he's also part of the people who are beating these drums of war, in quote? The, the danger in all of this is that when those saddled with the responsibility to uh, protect and uh, the lives and property of Nigerians fail to do so, nature throws up uh, characters that take laws into their hands and do things that are destructive. And Nigeria is heading towards that direction. And so it is important 
and pertinent that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the governors of the 36 states, and everyone who loves this country must begin to think right. It, it's not about just changing savage shapes. It's about the, the security architecture of the country. It is it's overwhelmed. In a country of about 200 million people, we have less than 500 police, police personnel. It's inadequate. It's grossly inadequate. And that goes for the army, the military, the, the air force, and the navy. We talk about men issues and the threat it poses to national security. We're not talking about the, 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 the terrorists or the, the sea pirates that have made life, life unbearable for our people in our riverine and our waterways. It's difficult to travel to communities because of the activities of pirates. And all that points to the fact that the security, insecurity, the state of insecurity is worsening in the country. And the security architecture is overwhelmed, overstretched. And Nigeria needs to a complete overhaul of the security architecture of the country. It is beyond changing service ships. They come from the system, so there is little or nothing they can do to change the system if the change the system is not rejected completely. Now, talking about the X-Men, for God's sake, cartoon marriage is a private business. Let those involved in the interests of national security and national peace establish ranches. If government at all levels want to support them, they could give them short loans to do so. Mm -hmm. The idea of open grazing and movement of cattle is outmoded, mm -hmm. and it will continue to create a crisis in this country. All right. Well, uh, Ken Robinson is the National Publicity Secretary of Pandef River State. And, of course, um, Oba Ebenezer Akiemi is a traditional ruler uh, in Ogun State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. It's wonderful to have me here. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the uh, drama happening between the PDP and the APC. Well, the politics of 2023 elections is in action as party leaders discuss defection. We'll be joined by a guest to talk more. Stay with us.